do you know this? That's what I do. I drink and I know things. The truth is, <laughs> I am Iron Man. Wherever I go, he goes. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. And here we go. What's up, everyone? Zach Williamson is the Culture Crate Podcast. I'm here today with my co-host, Luke Goosens. Today we're talking House of the Dragon, Episode 7. So I thought it was another good episode again. I was watching the behind-the-scenes doc about this episode. It's interesting because they're on this island that they could only film on for five days, and there's actually a path. Damn, bro. Yeah, yeah. So they're out. It's in the UK somewhere, this castle, and it's like a real location and everything. And at two points during the day, there's a road that you can actually drive out to get there, and the rest of the day, it's gone. Water just knocks everything over, so you're just like on this castle, oh. isolated. Yeah, so they had to be really specific with what date, what time is there filming. And sometimes the people, if they had to come back in, they'd have to take the ferry in, take a ferry in. And one thing too with this episode was because they only filmed this part, this a majority of this episode over five days here with all the exterior shots, is that the weather wasn't necessarily cooperating. So you'd have some days where if they're filming one half of the cast on one side of the, of the scene, it'd be sunny out and really nice. And the other half would be kind of gray and cloudy during that while they were filming and you can kind of see it when you're looking through the episode there might be certain shots where it's really nice weather in the background and then it's this gloomy nasty cloudy rainy stuff it was like raining for a good chunk of the days that they were filming there too and so that's why they had to even do more shots where it was that dark night filter that they threw over because there's a lot of scenes where they were filming it but they couldn't get the shot to line up with how the weather was for the other shots so they switched it then to like the nighttime filter they made basically that whole evening and that whole dinner turn night a little bit quicker than it would have been. Mm-hmm. I didn't even notice that till you said it. That's interesting. Why Why was Damon laughing when they were s- sending her into the sea? During that speech, man, he's low-key. The stuff that, what's his name, Vaymon? The stuff that he's saying, he's saying stuff about thin blood and how they need to keep their blood strong. And the whole time he's looking right at Rhaenyra and her kids. So he's throwing shade at Rhaenyra during his niece's eulogy. And Damon picked that up. Mm. And I think there's a lot of ways you can interpret on why he laughed. But for me, I think he laughed because he's saying, dude, you're being mad disrespectful right now. And you're going to regret you're going to regret this for even Mm. being this disrespectful, you know, with uh, because the only people there who would know what was being said are the people who speak Valyrian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was going on there. And that's why he laughed, because, yeah, at first. I wasn't really paying attention to what he was saying, and then he laughed, so I rewinded the whole scene, and I was just thinking, damn, these are really intentional, that he's he looks angrily at Rhaenyra, and then it's bouncing between those three characters, those shots, and even something he says has a Viserys look over, but Viserys says nothing, just showing, again, how weak he's become as a king, or he's just choosing to mm-hmm. ignore all this stuff that's happening within his family, all these all this slight and everything. Yeah, man, I thought there was like a lot of really interesting interactions. You got Allison kind of staring down Rhaenyra the whole time. And what was funny too is this is from a completely different interview. Olivia Cook said, because this was the first episode they filmed when they were making the show, was this one in these scenes, first days. Yeah. Allison said, the girl who plays her, Olivia Cook, said she was just super hungover the first day at work too. What? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was really funny. (laughs) Damn, bro. Yeah, and then Helena's having all these, she's having all these visions and and these dreamer comments, you know, these weird comments, the, the sister of... Aegon and Amond. Yeah. And I thought that there was actually really good kid, inter- kid interactions during this scene too because you have Helena, she's making another sort of dream. She's talking about wagon or uh, of dragons weaving in and out and what I felt like she's alluding there too. And she was talking about, I think she said green bowel and black bowel. So I think she's talking about the greens and blacks because that's now what we're seeing the positioning of these families. And so it, just like her previous dream where she was talking about how Amon would have to close an eye To get a dragon, basically. That happened in this episode. And there was something else that she said that I can't... She said that? Yeah, remember when she was playing with her little centipede or whatever in in the previous episode with with her mom in the room? She said, Allison was talking to Eamon and she said, you will get a dragon someday because he was complaining about how they gave him a pig as a, you know, pink dread or whatever. And then she Mm -hmm. made a comment and said, he will have to lose an eye or he'll have to close an eye is what she said. And she also said something 
that alludes to her other brother that we can't talk about because that one still has is yet to, to happen if it happens. But it seems like they're basically confirming that, yeah, she has the dragon dreams. Is that from the book where he loses an eye? The book happens, yeah, exactly. Pretty much, that's what was cool actually about this episode is everything that happened with how he gets the dragon in the book happens here too. It's really because of that situation. He, fight, he gets in a fight with his cousins and that's all because of the tension that their family, especially Allison, is putting on the kids. And yeah. the exact dialogue is pretty much ripped from George R. R. Martin's writing. He says he thinks it's fair. He lost an eye, but he got the biggest dragon in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Continuing on that scene. So there's interaction, too, between Jakar's Valarian and Amon, and where they were both standing in front of a fire pit, which has some symbolism, too, going into the future. But I thought that was a really interesting interaction because it felt like Amon actually wanted to say that he was sorry about what happened to Harwin, to his dad. But because of everything that his mom's saying and how it's actually treason to even bring up this kind of stuff, he doesn't know what to do in this situation. I think you're just seeing that really come through with a lot of these kids that if there wasn't these this pressure from their families that they'd probably still all be friends right now. Yeah. Huh. Dude, Aegon is such an idiot. <laughs> I know everyone when you he's just getting hammered, but then you see even Rhaenyra and Damon are both laughing at him at one point. I think they're both looking in his direction, but they don't actually make it super apparent that they're actually watching and noticing what's happening with him. Thought that was funny, mm-hmm. yeah. Man, he, you know, here's another thing. He's really not that bad of a dude so far. I mean, yeah, he's jacking off out the window and he's kind of a dick to his little brother, but it, he's another guy who doesn't feel like he doesn't care. He doesn't care if his sister becomes queen. He doesn't care about any of that kind of stuff either. Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. He's pretty indifferent about it. Yeah, and I felt that scene too where, oh, what's his name? Sir Kristen points out that Lar- Laris is actually watching her. That made me feel like, too, that he is super into Allison also, if he's even noticing these kind of things. Laris is super into Allison. Well, I think Laris is for Kristen sure. Cole. Laris for sure is into Allison, but I think Kristen Cole, if he's noticing the way he's even looking at him, and to me, it felt like a comment, like a almost even a little tiny bit jealous comment. Oh, for sure. Bro. Oh, dude, I thought it was like a only a matter of time till those two do something nasty. Yeah, bro. But that so that would be different than the book. Technically, there wasn't. And this is this is something I maybe have said on the pod in the past. But for some reason, in my mind, I always felt they could have done something in the book, but it never is actually s- super specified that they had any sort of relationship. But Sir Kristen is loyal to her in the book, too. And they're around the same age. And it's even in the future. So spoiler, I guess, after Viserys's death at some point in the story, they have, they're pretty close. They're pretty close, but it's never necessarily implied that they were doing anything together. They loved each other or anything like that. But I think that this show is just confirming that really for me. I don't know if they're, well, they're in love, but should add on that too, that the actress who played the younger Allison, she said that her character is in love with Sir Kristen. And that was mainly the reason why, well, there's two reasons why she was mad at Rhaenyra. Because Rhaenyra can get away with lying and nothing happens to her. And then two, Rhaenyra knew that she liked Sir Kristen and did that anyway. Did she ever say, like, explicitly in the... I don't remember her saying any, like, quips about it. No, she didn't. She never said it specifically, but I think in the first scene where Sir Kristen is introduced, you could see her really smiling at him, and both of them were. I mean, they both were into Sir Kristen, I think. But then I feel like that's probably something that was specified off season, off scene too, between the characters. Mm-hmm. I think it's safe to assume that. I don't. I don't know if we need to be spoon fed all of that. I mean, it, just her saving his life also to me confirms that. Yeah, okay, she had a soft spot for him and she liked him. Mm, Got gotcha. you. But I'm not even sure. I don't know about at this point. I don't know if they've hooked up. We have no sign. We have no evidence of that happening yet. Yeah. No. Not yet. For sure. Not. But yeah, I feel like it's gonna happen. Yeah, and that's so that for sure too. So even Rhaenyra, she's watching Damon, and the camera's focused on Damon. It's the same way that she was watching the interaction when Damon came back from the step zones. She was, you know, walking around the outside, watching him, waiting for the interaction with her father. This is the first time that they've seemed like they've talked now in ten years. Her parent, I mean, her uncle and her dad, because they didn't even talk at the wedding. Mm-hmm. Dude, how did Otto Hightower get the job back? So confused about that. He got the job because Lionel Strong's dead now. So? Oh, so you don't you think that he should have hired someone else? I think maybe 
the I mean, he just goes back to the dude where they kicked out because he was a fucking rat. God, dude, I hate it when they turn this brightness down. <laughs> I know you look like you're just in a pitch black room right now. Yeah. So in at least in the wiki right now, it just says Otto returned his hand after Lionel Strong died. And you know what it is, man? Maybe it's that Allison has so much influence now that she was able to convince the king. Yeah, that seems that probably makes sense. Yeah. And he's been hand in the past. He's got multiple grandsons who multiple grandchildren who are here. So what was the other thing you said, too? There's something else with that scene you were talking about. Maybe I was talking about. Oh, this was this was something, too, that I didn't catch this. This was pointed out by a Twitter user. I can't remember the handle of the person. Because it wasn't someone who just directed a question to us or anything. It was just a random tweet out there that went kind of numbers. At one point, it looks like people think when Viserys says, well, what do you need to Damon? It almost looks like Damon's about to say Rhaenyra before he stops himself and then says nothing, which would be interesting if that's true. It does look like he's about to say something. I, I, don't, I can't read lips. So I don't know what the fuck he was going to say. Also, I thought the... Rhaenyra's second son, I really liked what he said, too, when he was saying that, well, if I'm lord of the tides, that means everyone's dead. It's just, the, I think these these child actors have done a pretty good job, is, I guess is what I'm trying to get at here in this show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're pretty believable, for sure. And even their action sequence, I thought, was pretty good and pretty brutal. <laughs> a bunch of cousins just fighting and being assholes to each other. <laughs> kind of nutty they went to the knife. Bro, that was crazy, but he he went to the he was getting a rock out too. That's true. He was being, I mean, like that situation. Yeah, you're being an act, you're being an asshole to these kids on the funeral of their mom. Mm -hmm. But I feel like everyone kept escalating it because then Bela, I I believe that's Damon's daughter's name. I think she was the one who punched him first, and it's four on Mm -hmm. one, you know. So you gotta kind of defend yourself, and then you have your mom in your ear constantly telling you about how. These kids are gonna these kids are gonna try to kill you someday. <laughs> God, I know, bro. She's just putting it all on these kids. They wouldn't be acting so crazy if she wasn't Yeah. And the actor who played young Amon, who I thought did really great in this role too, probably was the biggest standout of all the children in the past two episodes overall, looking back. He was saying that his character feels in that moment when he gets Vagar that he comes out and he's just so much more confident and that it's like a complete switch for him. The second he gets off of it, off of Vagar, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. so that was for sure carried over into that scene with their brawling as kids. And what else here? Yeah, that that was that's pretty far up our head. So a good thing we already talked about that. We can skip it. I'm only at the scene right now <laughs> where Otto lifts Aegon and <laughs> such a dick to him. Yeah, I just seen that one. Just no grandpa skills at all, man. Complete asshole. I'm at the scene where Damon and Rhaenyra are about to smash. Oh, nice. Yeah, I just, I'm skipping the part with Coralus and Rannis. Coralus really doesn't let that go that she was supposed to be queen. Wait, sorry, what did you say? I was just saying how, sorry, I'm skipping ahead too, but I was saying how Coralus, he's the one who always brings up about how Rhaenys should have been queen. Rhaenys should have been queen. Oh, yeah, facts, yes. But yes. She seems over it, but he For just sure. never lets it go. And I all his, I guess because he's always about legacy, that makes like, sense, I guess, but... Yeah, for sure. But then it's like, what is your motive, though, ultimately, then after this? It's interesting. But because he's pretty tied to Rhaenyra. If there is tension between them, it makes sense. His son just died. These guys are getting married (laughs) right after. Yeah. Damn, dude, that would suck for him because he's all about legacy. And then his daughter just died. He only has two granddaughters. Two granddaughters. Yeah. And that's no one to carry on your name. But he doesn't seem to care. He has two. He has grandsons. What do you mean? Rhaenyra's kids are his grandsons, even if he doesn't, even if they're not really his grandsons by blood. That was what he was saying. I know he said that, but actually, he's isn't your legacy like your name? That's what he's saying, though. He's saying people will remember their name. Plus, I also feel like what you can just do then is intertwine your their name's gonna be Targaryen, not Val. Oh, it is Valerian. They're, they're Valerian. Valerian. That was the one of the rules they made. Lanor. God damn it. And there's still ways I feel like to get around that because if you just have your grandsons all marry each other, your grandchildren, then... It- Wait, aren't they Valerian until... So the one who would become Lord of the Tides, he will keep his name Valerian. And 
whoever becomes king of Westeros, they would take their Targaryen name. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what it was. Mm-hmm. But what I was saying, Luke, is what you could still do is you could have Rhaenyra's kids marry Daemon's kids. That's such a Targaryen thing to do, and it would also work. Yeah, for that sure. Re- that was a little weird when the kids were just there at their wedding thing. Sorry, what wedding thing? Rhaenyra and Damon's wedding. Oh, yeah, bro. Imagine what those kids are thinking. Dude. That was so weird. I know. I was like, bro, what the? Like, both of these. Especially after, like. Both of these people's like, wives and husbands just died. And just died. Just yeah. died. And now they're just making out right in front of yeah, fucking bro. them. You know, it's like, what in the fuck? And you're my uncle? You'd be just thinking, man, we have the weirdest parents, probably. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Yeah, that's funny you brought that up because I was thinking the same shit because that had to be super soon after. Even though that is a common thing that royal families like that, you'd get married super fast. Marjorie was married to, well, she was betrothed to what, three or four people or married even to three or four people over the course of Game of Thrones. Marjorie, remember there was Renly Baratheon. That was her first husband. Oh, yeah, Renly. Then Joffrey Baratheon. And then Tommen. That's three. Okay, so three. And then she, Big Rip, blew up in the set. Damn, bro. She was just bad news. Everyone she touched. Fuck, that's fucking true. But the but Tommen died after. Oh, yeah, because that's why he jumped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they could have been good, honestly, together. Shit, probably. Maybe. I actually, had, dude was susceptible to the sparrows. They had to go, too. Yeah, those susep- those susceptibles. Susceptible. <laughs> the, those sparrows were whack. Yeah, Shout. they were whack as fuck. Yeah, man. All right, I'm skipping this part. That's interesting. What do you think that they should do? So he doesn't want to... Uh, so Rainus wants... Man, these names get so hard sometimes, even if I say them all the time. Dude, I... I Laris, Lanor, <laughs> bro, they all blend into one. <laughs> Laris Varys. I mean, he's every lots of these. <laughs> All right, everyone. Quick little break for a word from our sponsors. Is Rhaenyra even enjoying their sex? Oh fuck! Here's no. Hold on, I'm not at is that she, scene. But is she just doing this because she needs someone strong to help her? Is she trying to take advantage of Damon, or are they actually in love? So in the behind the scenes stuff, one of the producers was saying this is a real marriage. At least in this moment, in this day, there is real love there. Why is she just staring off into space when she's getting laid, dog? Bro, I mean, fuck, I didn't actually watch the sex scene that close. Let me, let me, let me bring up. Bro, it looked like there was some I passion know, behind it. Bro, I, now that I'm rewatching, maybe it's because the sound's off. Hmm. She's just staring. I'm looking at going into the scene. She's saying, I'm no longer a child and we can do this. This is something we've always wanted to do. It feels like there's real passion there. Bro, if I was that dragon with all those fucking ropes hanging off me, I would be pissed. I'd rip that shit right off. Yeah, the dragon must not care. That's a big boy. Boy. Big girl. Oh, yeah, big girl. Yeah, bro. I mean, props to this dude for going up and getting this dragon, man. Yeah, what? Does the dragon just capitulate to the first person to try to no. ride it? Dragons have to choose you also. To me, if they were mad... I know it's it's kind of fucked. It's definitely fucked up because it's on the same day that their mother, they did their mother's funeral. Yeah, dude, that's a little messed up. But they, the dragons be they had, chasty. yeah, they had some days to at least try to bond. So I don't know, man. It's crazy to, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a bold move by him and it paid off. And that's the biggest dragon in the world. That dragon alone could easily kill some of these super young dragons. Yeah massive and they were saying just how behind the scenes the, the way it flies too is just that they get older they really die because they get too big some dragon they it hasn't happened yet but they get so heavy too when they're fly, from how big they are that it's actually gets really hard for them to fly sometimes <laughs> they just turn into big fat chickens yeah yeah exactly so i guess you could beat that man what you could do is if you had a if you had a fast small dragon get up above them right and try to kill the yeah. Try to kill the rider. Oh yeah, fact. I'm just trying to think how you'd beat this if you were at war with them. 
Because oh, that dragon I was thinking, is huge. I, I was thinking something different, dude. I'd get a boat full of 20,000 goats and just keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. And then all of a sudden it's so fat it can't get off the ground. <laughs> Usually, okay. Not a, you, you, had, <laughs> you had the most <laughs> thought out Batman style thing. Yeah, we're just going to ship it off. <laughs> Random meat chunking that bad boy <laughs> you know? up. Just get, get turn that thing into a fucking Barney. You know why I like that idea too is because it's so big it cannot fit in a dragon pit. So you know it just be out on the land somewhere. Yeah, just demo and shit. Plump it up. I know dragons would be such a big fuck up to the ecosystem. They'd be roasting everything. Yeah, bro. Especially these big ones. Well, I, I this dragon's pretty big. I wonder how much it really needs who knows man i don't this there probably is some data on this from george r R. martin somewhere that i mean think about it the bigger it is the more fucking nutrients it needs to live what about an old one do old animals need as much food yeah i mean they start to die like old people you know they just start eating less than because this because this dragon's 150 years old this dragon existed during aegon's conquest like this was one of Aegon's and then wives. they get compromised. This dragon's probably going to get old, get compromised, and then another dragon's going to take it out, like you were saying. Yeah, or... Younger, faster dragon. I think Balon might have... Or ba- uh, Balerion might have been one of the only dragons to ever die of old age. He was 200-something years old. He was old. <laughs> so they can... This one, they can give it even older. Damn. Let's look it up. That's pretty nutty. Balerion, age one. How do dragons have sex? Oh, they don't because they have eggs. I actually looked this up recently. I'll tell you in a second. Well, bro, they don't have sex. Valerian was 200 years old. So that would mean that this dragon, who's 150-something years old, is in its last... Probably this is going to be their last dragon rider would be Amon. Hmm. If, obviously, if he, unless he doesn't make it to old age. but I love how they put the holes in their wings and shit. Yeah, man, that was cool, man. Really battle-scarred up like, dragon. Yeah, bad money. Been bug. through it, man. That's one of those dragons from the beginning, man. With the Dornish Wars and stuff, too. This dragon has been through so many wars. Mm-hmm. Aegon's Conquest, Dornish Wars, multiple wars with the Dornish. Man, probably just other random stuff in between, too. Just random skirmishes when someone tries to rebel and you got to bring a dragon out. Mm-hmm. Massive, man. So this is probably... Aemon's probably the third or fourth dragon rider, then, too, for this dragon. I'm so- Damn, three or four in 150 years? Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, one of them... Bro, those riders do not have a good... <laughs> lifespan? Yeah, bro. Lifespan. Here, you know what? I feel like I should have known this one, but let's look it up. What's her name? Rhaegar? I'm just, I get so worried sometimes with these because this is how I'm going to spoil myself, but... Vagar. Also, the dragon sequence was cool. That was one of the scenes. When, behind the scenes, they said they filmed the dragon sequence stuff in the air. In the in the volume, you know that same style stuff they do the Mandalorian, and but mm-hmm. they did it seven months later. And one of their big worries because this was during COVID was that the mm-hmm. was the guy who plays Amon the kid was going to look too grown up. He's going to look completely different. Cause sometimes people just hit puberty and then that's it. Hmm. Let's see. Damn, bro. Okay, okay. So here we go. We got Aegon's conquest, first Jonas War. Okay, hold on. Damn, I actually don't fucking know who hold on so it was one of Aegon's wives to start for sure and was written by Visenya that's the first one bro those <laughs> okay here you go here we go I got them all ready what? so Vagar would have been on her Aemon is her fourth dragon rider there was the original one Queen Visenya so it was Queen Visenya Balon Targaryen which was I believe Rhaenys's dad Lena Valerian and Amon. So that's the fourth one. See, Balon Targaryen. Scene in the room where they were all yelling at each other was pretty tense. And I felt like this was like the scene that divided everyone. Now we know where everyone kind of stands going into the Dance of the Dragons. What do you mean going in Dance of the Dragons? Just going into the war that this whole show is based around. Uh, oh, fuck. I mean, I don't, I feel like we, you knew about that. No. Um, it's part of the description of, of the show. Yeah. Just, Went probably forgot. All good. Anyway, damn, bro. Was, What'd you think? You think Allison dude, was, was justified wanting to stab an eye out? I feel like she was acting kind of crazy. She was kind of wilding out, man. Yeah, and she got a slicing on Rhaenyra. I was like, whoa. I mean, dude, that almost 
had to have cut some sort of artery. Yeah, I thought she like, stabbed her where it was life threatening for a second. Almost. That was a good fake out at the end where I thought Damon just chilling in the background too, not it, where? What? Sorry, Damon was just chilling in the background of this whole fight, even though two of his kids were in this fight. Oh. He's not he's just not involved at all. And I thought you're talking I thought you're talking about um God damn. And there was the part two where Lenor, when Lenor was dipping. Sir Kristen's laughing when the comment about Lenor's guy is made, which I thought was interesting because he's the one who killed his first dude. I don't understand why Sir Kristen, he has so much uh, angst. Just an asshole, dude. <laughs> towards. R- oh, Rhaenyra. Towards Rhaenyra. I get why he's mad, dude, but it's like 15 years later, or 10 years later, like you'd think that would just simmer away. Yeah. Maybe because he... Bro, I could never hold a grudge for that long. Seriously. Because he's an asshole, man. <laughs> just a dick. Can't even hate an ex for that long. Yeah, no way, man. There's just one per- person who hooked up with you one time. <laughs> yeah, bro. A person who hooked up with you one time, the, the dude. The whole world's You're moved on nutty. now. No one even cares. I mean, you got away with fucking murder, bro. Just drop it. Yeah. At this point, damn. Anyway, so you liked... So that's what I was going to tell you about. So with the ending, you said you liked the the ending with Lenor leaving. Yeah, that was good, dude. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming at all. In fact, that... I thought she was going to be totally cold-blooded like that. Because kind of Damon, he seems like he has those tendencies. Yeah, bro. He's down to kill people. He's down to kill spouses. Yeah. Killed his first one. He, if you want, he's down. Like he, yeah, he's got yeah, like totally. his sinister fit too. He always wife. puts his hood on when he's about to, when mm-hmm. stuff's about to go down like that. Or you know, he like raided Flea Bottom, like just at willy nilly. Mm-hmm. Like you know, he has some kind of tendencies where it's iffy. So I was like, dang. Yeah, yeah, that was a good twist. You're right. It was really good. And in the book, that wasn't what happened. In the book, it was. It felt more cemented that he was killed by Sir Carl, and it was in a. It was at a fair. And Sir Carl, it seemed like he, the way the rumor went was that he got basically paid off to do it, but it looked like that it was a fight that they were just mad about something and they both started fighting. But there was a lot more witnesses mm-hmm. and it sounded like there was for sure a body and not a burnt up body, you know? So like you probably identify that it was actually Lenor. So this was pretty different than the book. And even in the book too, what basically confirms that it's, that he dies is that his his dragon sea smoke bonds with someone else later. And that doesn't happen if you're dragon and you know, if you're still alive, they can sort of sense it. It's some sort of we don't even know what how they know this or if it's magic or if it's something else, but they can pretty much tell if you're still alive. Hmm. And they can't bond to someone else while their dragon rider is alive. So I don't know what they're gonna do here because sea smoke is a major part of of what's coming. And this is different for sure. Or maybe they're just not going to have sea smoke. I mean, bro, you're gonna have you're gonna have a dragon in this. Oh, which is probably also why Damon didn't want to kill him. He respects this dude. He's a fighter. Yeah, I still think he'd probably kill people, even though he's been to war war with them. But you're right that he has respect for Lanner. He said he's a fine knight, but you'll be bored with him. And I think when he said that, he just knew that he also was into men, so that was a factor with it. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, no, I mean, like they, he knew he's formidable and everything. And he, I don't think he want, and that's why the twist was good too. Cause he probably didn't want to kill him. He wanted to help him get out of there, just solve the situation. Yeah. And they still get the rep like they killed him. Yeah. Which would have been, it just, it would have been crazy evil, especially after Lenora was like, as soon as this happens, I'm going to be a good husband and everything. I'm going to help with this situation because you would want I know that's why I was like holy fuck bro this changes the way I look at fuck Rhaenyra yeah and you would have another dragon rider on your side in the upcoming battle war and all that so that's another ally yeah. he's a big ally bro this guy's a, one of the only guys who's actually fought in war and he's already showed that he actually has leadership skills in war too and that gets stuff done mm-hmm. make tough calls like that man so it's a tough loss even with him being gone, but that's why I'm kind of like, man, then who? what's going to happen with Sea Smoke? Because Sea Smoke, and I don't think this is a spoiler because if anyone wants to skip ahead, I'll put a timestamp in, but because I think that they're changing something here, we can talk about it because they're doing something different for sure. So in the book, mm-hmm. what happens is 
they get to a point where they need more dragon riders or or Jakaris, her son, Rhaenyra, thinks they need more dragon riders. And so they put a call out for bastard Targaryens or bastard Valerians and to try to see if someone could claim sea smoke. And so someone comes fo- he comes forth from Driftmark, basically. And it's either rumored that this kid ends up being Laenor's bastard son somehow, or he's Coralus's bastard son. But that, but it's a little bit different too because that's a in this world we've established in the in the Game of Thrones TV universe that you have to be Targaryen to ride a dragon, so it couldn't be Coralus's kid. So mm-hmm. it would have to be Laenor's bastard child mm-hmm. in the book. But they can't do that if he's alive now. So I think a theory you could have there, there's there's a few options I guess with how they have to go with this for this to still make narrative sense if you were going with pretty much what you're doing with the book. And it'd have to be that Lenor is going to have to eventually die off screen somehow, or he dies over an SO somehow. Maybe he goes to the Stepstones and dies, or he comes back. <laughs> Either way, he did. <laughs> or he comes back with a disguise or a new identity somehow and fights in the war and takes back Sea Smoke. And he has a, he has a name. And a name the name in the book, his name is Adam. So what if he comes back with an alias, basically? That is something I think could be interesting if they do it that way. Yeah, it'd be nutty. I don't know how you would do it, though, because how do you look? Do they have plastic surgeons back in this in Game of Thrones? They got the, oh, shit, bro. They have the they have those dudes who change faces. That's true. But he's going to do that. He's got to do, like, some crazy training and shit. Become a faceless man. That would but be insane. he just insane. wants to be free, right? But he just wants to be free. Why would he go do the faceless man shit when he just wants to be free? You're right. He just just he just wants to be free of houses and responsibility, really. But what if eventually he gets guilty with what's happening to his family back here? If something he you know something goes down, could you just stand? Yeah, could that's you true. could you stay away from that forever? But how would they receive him? Wouldn't your parents be livid as fuck? <laughs> what if they're dead? I mean, what if they're not around anymore? Mm, true. You should watch the uh, trailer teaser. <laughs> okay, shit. <laughs> when you say it like that, it makes me feel like there's some stuff going down with the Valarians. All right, everyone. Warning, potential spoilers for the upcoming episode of House of the Dragon. We're going to talk about the preview trailer. Damn, that really is such a crazy twist that they kept him alive, man. Did not expect that at all. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> oh, I did not. High Tower family looks nutty, fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they look like a bunch of goofballs, huh? Uh, they look, bro. It, honestly, it kind of looks like the Adams family. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is interesting. I didn't watch this full trailer. I watched. I saw the stuff with. Ooh, this is interesting, man, because it feels like now they're going to break up the storyline a little bit, whereas there's going to be this stuff going on with King's Landing with the greens and the blacks now, because Viserys seems like he's definitely sick and stuff's winding down with him. That might This might be the last episode that we have him in it, this next one. Yeah. I mean, it seems he's going senile and high towers are taking over. Yeah, and this is definitely another like six years ahead, five to six years right now. Time jump again. Oh, for, yeah, for sure, because these kids are now grown up. Yeah, so we're probably going to also see then uh, some kids or a kid potentially from Damon and Rhaenyra too in this ep- coming up episode, Another, the next generation after them. Or I guess this is still probably the same generation, just the younger part of it. Yeah, man, I, that's going to be interesting now because all those kids now are going to be Joffrey age, and one of those guys looks like he's 30 years old. <laughs> <laughs> the dude who plays Amon. Yeah, dude. Bro, that guy yeah. looks fucking old, man. He looks older than his mother. I, bro, I was thinking the exact same thing. He would be, what, like 20 maybe at this point? I know, dude. 18? I was like, bro, he looks way older bro than Bro looks grown as shit, man. Bad, just bad casting, bad casting. I mean, maybe he's right super, He's a, his character ends up becoming a like Damon style character. He's my, he's my favorite of the tar- of the sorry of the high tower family he's my favorite character because he has interesting motives too and stuff and he's not necessarily all bad you know i'm not i'm not gonna say all bad he's not necessarily all oh i need to do what's best for my family and my brother it's, it could be his own motives is what i mean and he also cares for people certain people too oh, and i didn't catch that either man so that everyone this is a spoiler part for sure but it sounds like Coralus is going to be dead in this next episode yeah 
That's yeah, interesting. It seems like gonna die. Uh, you know what? And then it's her sitting on the throne, right? I don't know. This whole part of the story, I do not remember at all. The war, the second war of the Stepstones, and what goes down with that. I, to my knowledge, from Fire and Blood, I don't remember a ton of that. I was more focused on one that was then happening within the family. But that's interesting. I mean, he's going to try to take that spot, dude. I mean, she's going to come in with a dragon. Like, what's he think is going to yeah. work here, bro? This is this is. She's got her own heirs too, so maybe this is what it's going to be, man. Is that she's going to take Driftmark throne? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Which is weird because she was she wasn't interested in the throne, and now she fucking wants to steal the throne. A little whack. Steal the throne, but that's that is pretty much her place. She's lived there. She has children who were Valarions. She would still be queen. Yeah, but she's not Valerian. Well. Um, she might be, man. I don't, I don't know how far back their lines go intertwined at all, but <laughs> they're both from Valeria. But yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Unlike this other Valerian. dude, but he doesn't have any... Whatever, dude. What's his name? Amon doesn't have any heirs. That's interesting, though, that they're setting him up to be a villain because he's been saying stuff through this whole show. That, okay, he could go and do his own thing. He's pretty loyal to his brother, though. Amon? Or who? Corliss's brother, Vaymond. Their first child, Rhaenyra and Damon have, they name him Aegon. <laughs> no. <laughs> I swear, God. dude, just to, just to fuck with the line, potentially. Yeah, man, to fuck with the situation going down. But we'll see. I can't remember if that's how they do it. And what's interesting, too, man, is this show really looks like they just cut out the fourth Hightower kid. They have a, fourth, they have a third son that it feels like they're not even adapting that at all, which is a big change, too. Because that's another dragon Why? rider. Because the, they're supposed to be an older one, right? You said no. They have a fourth youngest child, another son, their third male son, named Darren. <laughs> oh, they didn't want to name, name him some Magon, Blagon, Blagon. <laughs> they just named him Darren. What are their kids' names? They got Aegon, Helena, Amen. Helena, Amon, 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 and then they had Darren. Yeah, that was their fourth one. <laughs> But it's spelled, it spelled... You forgot Daniel. Bro, it's spelled D-E-A-R. It's still got the styling to it. Daron. 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 Maybe it's Daron. Hey, yo. Day-ron. This is where I need fucking Ross to come in with the correct pronunciation. Yeah, this ex- this next episode looks interesting, man. It looks like this is going to be the one where Viserys bites the dust and some stuff's about to go down. We're going to see some other characters getting killed. Yeah, see some people get iced. And then the final alliances are going to formulate before the end, pretty much going in to the end here, man. I have nothing else, man. I think that is honestly really interesting. This was the first episode that they shot in order, you know, out of order like that. Mm. Before you even have... Why do they do that? Before you even have a ton of chemistry and stuff. He just said, because this is the episode that everything that's been building up in the show happened with this fight. You know, someone loses an eye. Rhaenyra gets stabbed by her former best friend. That's everything you've been building up to right here. So they, you said they just wanted to start off with a bang. Mm, got you. Yeah. Oh, this is an interesting fact. Olivia Cook, the actress who plays Alison Targaryen, or sorry, not Alison Targaryen, Alison Hightower, her first son, Aegon Targaryen, the guy who plays him in the show is a year younger than her in real life. And I'm not even talking about the one that we said that looks like that fool looks like he's 30 years old. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about the long-haired one, jacking off. Yeah, that kid. That guy. Bro, yeah. I got nothing else, man. I think we. Yeah, I'm good, dude. So that's our podcast this week, everyone. Thank you for listening. Make sure to drop a rating review on Apple and Spotify, whichever you're listening to. Make sure to go follow us on Twitter at Thrones underscore facts, at Culture Crave, at Culture Crave Pod. Shout out our producer, Julian Gallegos. We'll be back next week with House of the Dragon episode eight.